Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Oblivion. Uh, I would like to shout out Drunken Bartender Seventeen on Reddit who lost Martin, and then Abahu, yeah, who just mentioned that there's a console command to teleport right to wherever the hell any NPC is. Player dot move to, and then the NPC's code, which in Martin, which in Martin's case is one capital E, one E, seven forty seven, all one word. Or no, 745. Uh, so yeah, you just literally type in, send me here, and you punch in the code of the guy you want to go to. And then it'll just drop you right there. Uh, so yeah, we have Martin back now. Cool. So, Oblivion, huh? It's wrapping up. I'm going to wrap it up either in November or at the uh, start of December. I will come back for the DLC. I realize that I've now promised that for a few games. Uh, recently, I did it for Castlevania, I know. Technically, that ah. was in October. Well, it was in October and November because of my schedule slip. Getting COVID will really do that to a guy. Um. <clears throat> Here, let me swap back to my. Oh, this is. This is more. Did I have like a buff on that made me do better? And then how am I doing? Here? Yeah, I've been. This this is super weird, but for some reason, Oblivion is <clears throat> making me. It, it's putting me in the mood to go play Morrowind or Skyrim, but not more Oblivion. It's kind of weird. Maybe just because, like, you, you recognize what you know and like. And, like, that's the thing that I want. You know, give me some more of that. But, you know, it's it's a... Uh, it's one of those things, I guess. You know... Oblivion, I, I mentioned this, but it's in this weird place where, like, it's not as pretty looking as, Sky, as Skyrim, and it has a lot of lack of polish that Skyrim had. Um, like, the level up menu in Skyrim uh, loses those fun little things of, like, You're, you've hit level 14. You know, things are easier than you think, but harder if you don't think. You know, they, they give you those little clever, little clever cut-ins. Um, I see that thing down there. I don't even know if I care. Ah! I mean, like, what's the point? We could just close all of them in one go, right? Oh, yeah, now that I'm level 14 or 15 or whatever, we're now getting ah! guitars to spawn in. Yeah, we can see trolls, too. Ah! Even a Daedra. I guess the Minotaur must be, right? Ah. Maybe I can kite them to the village. Or city. But yeah, Skyrim has a great deal of polish. And like the way that like Vikings chant at you when you when you take a level. Like that's all great. That's all so cool. I love all that. That's so fun and awesome. And... Oh, right. Trolls have that regeneration. So let's stack a few on, ah! on him and see if we can. Oh, it's working. Get back here. Troll fat. I wonder what, what about troll fat specifically? Just warming up, you pathetic worm! Yeah, get him. Well met, citizen. Long live the Empire. Yeah. With Sean Bean at the helm? I don't know, man. So. 
Yeah, and then like there's just a bunch of like really clean stuff. Like the way that the magic system works in, in Skyrim is just so easy. It's convenient. It's simple. It makes sense. You know, I, I feel like there's never a time when I'm like brought up short by the magic system. And that has absolutely happened in this game and the next one. There's a few things that early on would would have given me pause, like um, just some weird things with how soul trapping works, for example, off the top of my head here. But yeah, and then the other thing is like I'm thinking about I want to play Morrowind again. Like Morrowind is definitely a game that's very replayable, but like ah, sometimes it can be a little painful to see a let's play or replay a game because like man, we saw this one already. <laughs> Morrowind can be very different, but it is rather ah recognizable shall we say um no matter what path you're on maybe this can be my opportunity to do the back path i always wanted to do that well i actually no i have never done it hey lock pick all right Get some crab meat Ooh, another level turd ass Where is Sean Bean? Do I have to hit one of these again? See, it's super convenient. It literally just drops you right here. Why are you still here? Well, you're at least closer. Can we... I was worried about fast traveling with you, but can we do that? Can we make that a thing? Hey, we can! Which way? Um... Let me take a sleep. I've got the cash for that, right? It's like, what, 10 gold? Remember, trespassing in the Imperial Palace is a serious okay. crime. But yeah, I've never done a, um, uh, I, I've never played around with the alchemy too much. I, I do actually like using magic. I will use a, a, a decent amount of magic. What? Be glad you will not live no, to see a day, no. Lord Dagon. Oh, don't hurt me. I do not fear death. Yeah. Uh, How goes it? They're what? jumping this guy. Hey, that might cover my uh. Race. Later, are you okay? Did you this know? is what it feels like to have period like cramps. He'll also teach others Alicia how to do it. Have the worst job in Good day. All right. Uh, we're looking for an inn. Surely. A feed bag. Good as new merchandise. Trade goods. Honey, are you all right? Really? Oh, merchants. Are. What? I do have... Ver Goodbye. Good to see you. I actually do like um, having to sleep to level up. All right. Life isn't over. You can still get smarter or clever or more experienced or meaner, but your body and soul just aren't going to get any younger. That's sad to think about, but it is correct. All right. I didn't like that hitch there so I'm gonna save and where are we now we're level 17 dang all right yeah I've been fixing to oh, why walk there let's just boop. I have arrived in the elder council chamber I must present Martin's claim to Chancellor Octato Okato Okato Head of the council. I've been expecting you. Hi. The full council has already considered the matter of Martin's claim to the imperial throne in detail. Martin Septim, on behalf of the elder council, I Chancellor accept your Ocado. claim to the imperial Chancellor throne. Chancellor Ocado. Chancellor Ocado, the city is under attack. Oblivion gates Whoa. have opened, and okay. Daedra are inside the walls. The guard is overwhelmed. Man, if they could do this the whole time, Courage, why are they fucking soldier. around with Bruma? We have an emperor again. 
Your Highness, what are your orders? Shall the guard fall back to the palace? No. If we let ourselves get besieged in the palace, we're doomed. We must get to the Temple of the One immediately. As you command, yeah. Also, in my playthrough of uh, Morrowind, I, I didn't use any magic. Um, it was part of a challenge that I was doing to have a completely mundane character. Oh, hey, guys. Wow, when you said they're in here, you meant it, huh? Take that, man. Let me take a look at that. Penance of hatred, drain strength, and drain endurance. Interesting. But yeah, I enjoy playing Morrowind in a lot of ways. I actually don't know if I like, um. Woof! Corpses in the street. Oh, that's funny. They have clothes on their on their person because they are uh, because they're an NPC and they need to have clothes. But I think that because they're not, or no, maybe it's because they're not. Dead. It looks like I can't loot these things off their bodies. Because you, you can knock somebody out and not actually kill them. Isn't it weird that like a level 17 you are better than God? Like Skyrim has a pretty robust leveling system, but it's weird because like What's his name? Mirak? Level skills starting at level 30. So you're supposed to be level 30 before you even try me. And Alduin starts scaling at level 10. So you're supposed to be level 10 before you fight Alduin. Um. And so some of them like uh, start and stop scaling at like different levels. So I think Alduin goes up to like, le I think he goes up to level 80 because in the base game, you could only go up to level 80. You couldn't get any more. Maybe he goes up to 15. I knew all this at a time, I'm sure. Can I poison this? Does poison work on them? Resist. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, maybe these this armor is like a part of their... You look pretty good, dude. Maybe that armor is like a part of the character model. Okay, we're gonna take the long way around. Oh man, it is bad in here, lad. I wonder if you no clip under the city if you s can see the um, oblivion gate before it shows up. Just as like a uh, one of those little developmental things. Fine. Let's. Just start closing these up, huh? Closing these wounds. Oh, it says it in the loading screen, huh? God, all the warriors, huh? Am I supposed to be impressed? Not this big fancy shield. Oh. Huh? Ah! Ow! Join my trophy. Must help Martin reach the temple the one with the right. Okay, I have a task. Oh my God. Ah, ah, oh. 
god. <clears throat> hmm. Methinks this is a bit too early. Well, let's just hustle through then, huh? Boy, they are coming out in full force. Merun's Dagon is here. The barriers have been destroyed. Our only hope is to defeat Merun's Dagon and cast him into oblivion. Perhaps Martin will know what to do. Oh, he is! Jesus! Ah, that is unexpected, I will say that. Alright. Is Martin here already? How escorty is this meant to be? Alright, I will say it kind of does diminish it the fact that he's just like literally standing there. Faithful again. We are too late. Merun's Dagon is here. Lighting the dragon fires will no longer save us. Got it. The barriers that protect us from oblivion are gone. Can we put him back? I don't see how. Mortal weapons may hurt him, but now that he is physically here in Tamriel, they have no power to actually destroy him. What about the amulet? Wait, yes. The amulet was given to mortals by Akatosh. It contains his divine power. But how to use this power against Dagon? The amulet was not intended as a weapon. I have an idea, one last hope. I must reach the Dragonfires and the Temple of the One. Yeah. You'll just have to trust me. Okay, I'll get and you I'll... there. Follow. I'm with... Let me, uh... Let me juice up here. I was th th there's this game called Kenshi. You may have heard of it, especially if you like Morrowind, because Kenshi has a lot of the same stuff of like weird, chaotic world building, very ugly game, um, a lot of weird RPG mechanics. Do your worst. Oh, it's day now. This ends here. I'm oh. just warming up, you pathetic worm. All right, let's boogie, huh? My character's become a paladin. Good way to play, honestly. Just healing and using, um... Yeah, just like healing and using uh, uh, heavy spells. Or uh, healing, heavy armor and healing spells. <laughs> Got one down. The rest is up to you guys, right? Hard. Somewhat unexpectedly, too. <clears throat> the problem is that, like, I don't really feel challenged like I did when I was fighting Mankar. Because, like, when I was doing that, I had a whole bunch of, um, like, hype building up to it. But here it's like, by the way, he's here now. Oh, can't take a short Ow! In the old words, can't go that way, gotta go this way. Smooth, then like a Ken doll down there. Okay. We are in the temple, gotta get to the dragon fires. Are they following us? Martin, where'd you go? Here he is. 
I do what I must do. I cannot stay to rebuild Tamriel. Is Sean Bean going to die again? Because if, if that's the case, that Farewell. does not surprise me at all. You've been a good friend in the short time that I've known you. Oh, thank but you, now I Bean. must go. The dragon waits. The dragon. Uh huh. Whoa. I love magic that looks like that, where it's like. <gasps> oh my god! He's become a kaiju. Wow, yeah, he's like a real dragon. with that nuclear breath. Oh, now he's gone. That seems like a heroic sacrifice. Also, he got stabbed. I'm not sure where. It seems superficial, but he said, I go now. The dragon awaits. So maybe he had to give up his physical form, and this is just his soul. And then when that's gone, he'll just... Whoa. The amulet is shattered. Dagon is defeated. Let me turn that off for you guys. With the dragon's blood and the amulet of kings, we have sealed the gates of oblivion forever. The last of the septims passes now into history. I go gladly, for I know my sacrifice is not in vain. I take my place with my father and my father's fathers. The third age has ended and a new age dawns. When the next Elder Scroll is written, you shall be its scribe. The shape of the future, the fate of the Empire. These things now belong to you. Wow. Thanks, Sean Bean. Oh, we're back in. Are we gonna what have happened? Him? Where's Martin? I must congratulate him. Mayroon's Dagon is. Martin's gone. What? We saw the temple dome explode. The. Yeah. That was Martin? He shattered the amulet. The joined blood of kings and gods. The amulet of kings. The divine power of Akatosh. Yeah. And Martin's blood. Then. Martin is gone. Man. Somehow I figured that Sean Bean would die for real. But, like, I did not put together that it would be through this. That it would be, you know, <laughs> him becoming a big dragon god and, and fighting a devil. Yes. Sealed forever. Martin is dead. But he died an emperor and a hero to rival Tiber Septim. I don't know about that. I don't like Tiber Septim. I like Talos. I don't like Tiber Septim, but I don't know about rival. This victory is not without cost. We've lost Martin Septim. What an emperor he might have made. No kidding. His sacrifice was necessary, but it leaves the empire without an emperor. I don't know what happens now. <laughs> there are troubled Civil times War. ahead for the empire. But now is not the time to worry about the future. Let's just give thanks that we're alive. Yeah. In my capacity as Lord High Chancellor of the Elder Council, I hereby proclaim you Champion of Cyrodiil. I did it, guys. I'm the Champion of Cyrodiil. And as a small token of gratitude for your... Imperial Dragon Armor is normally worn only by the Emperor himself. Ooh. But you deserve no less, Champion. Cool. You have earned the highest rank possible in the Order of the Dragon. It is a high honor. Six other champions. I guess maybe the protagonist of two or three other games, and then Tiber Septim himself, and then probably like two or three other protagonist-like characters. The dudes who the books get written about, you know? We are now the stewards of the Empire. But to be honest, I don't know what will happen. The provinces have been restive for years, with no legitimate claimant for the Dragon Throne. No kidding. I know he's gone. 
The dragon will stand forever as a memorial to what you and Martin did for all of Tamriel. Unless we old Mary rip it down. CCL. Let me get a good look at this, all right? Big long necked dragon. No floor here, but I'm never supposed to see this. Yeah, looks very much like the uh, the dragons present in Skyrim. The dragons present in Skyrim are actually famously not dragons. They're wyverns because dragons have four limbs and then two wings, which are not limbs. They have two forelegs and two back legs and two and two wings. For which oh, he's trying to follow me. He's trying to get to me. Hail. Which actually Any gives them a total of six me. limbs, like, which is unusual because no other reptile has that. In the afternoon. Speak. Citizen. Move along. You're the champion, damn you. Race guys, huh? <laughs> I wonder if this statue is there the whole time as well. Is there some Imperial Dragon? Okay, where do I get it? Any time, champion. Let me... Let's do a little save. Let's save. Just to make sure we don't lose anything. Imperial Dragon Armor. Imperial Legion Armory in the Prison District. Okay. If you run into trouble, four of the move along. There's no. You guys Carry are ranking five. All hail the champion of Cyrodiil. Damn right. So I know that there are two DLCs for this. What can I? Long live the M. Wait, where am I supposed to be going for this? I know that there are two DLCs for this. Oh, it, it it takes me two weeks. Wow. Wow. Empire. Yeah, it'll take me two full weeks to unlock this armor. Oops. Excuse me, I'm just looking for the you door out. My ear, citizen. I. Look, that's probably not worth it. <laughs> I mean, it'll be good armor, I'm sure, but for this video, I don't know. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just taking it all in. The game was really good. I do think that it's aged pretty poorly, but it's really hard to future-proof a game like this, you know? Because, like, th there were times when games like this were coming out and people were, like, just blown away by how, like, good and real they looked. And, like, it does look pretty good, but, like, it just aged a little poorly in regards to the other games. I, in a weird way, I almost feel like Morrowind has aged better graphically. Though, maybe that's because I'm so used to playing open Morrowind with a uh, just a little adjustment just to make sure everything can fit on my screen and uh, not this. Where's my progress? Just hit one. Great. Ah. <sighs> It was a very, very fun game, though. I mentioned that, like, it does not have all the jank and crazy stuff going on that, you know, that uh, Morrowind had. And it didn't have the polish that Skyrim had. Even though all three of them have, you know, typical Bethesda bugs. Uh, you know, one thing that this game does have that the others really do not, like, at all. This game has insane... This guy's corpse is just still in the street. That's 
funny. Um, this game has pretty insane, like, have pity on an old combat. war veteran. Because, like, combat in Morrowind and for some reason Skyrim is just pretty simple hack and slash and stuff. Like, I, I've never really felt too strongly about, like, Skyrim combat. Uh, you just kind of click buttons and, and, and go, Come you know? <laughs> It doesn't have much going on with it. Uh, let me put a torch on here. But this actually has pretty interesting combat. I'm okay with the magic. I think that it's still definitely very unbalanced. <sighs> bang these back together. Assuredly a really good game. I don't want anyone to come out of this thinking that I don't think that this is a good game. I really, really enjoyed it. I definitely have some complaints, but I don't even want to say that this is like a 7 out of 10. Like, it's it's higher than that. I would say much higher than that. It's just really good. Like, I will say, playing it in the year that I have, this feels like, oh, it's another Elder Scrolls. And that really shouldn't be what I'm, you know, feeling from it. Every new Elder Scrolls should just blow my mind completely. And like, you know, Morwen and Skyrim both did, but Oblivion does so many things differently. It takes a it takes a, a step back from the really big let me let me make myself big. Yeah, let me side my side myself with my character here. Oh, where'd I go? There we go. Um like it gives us a much smaller world. And, you know, ultimately, I, th I feel like this is much smaller because, like, even, even though it does concern the whole realm, like, Dagother's plan concerned all of reality, not just one plane of existence. And I think Alduin's also concerned every reality, not just this one. And, like, that's weird that, like... <laughs> That we're talking about an entire plane of reality and we're like that's a pretty small low low stakes thing but I, I mentioned this in the other episodes but it always feels pretty low stakes you know i'm actually fine with that too i think it's cool um it's just so many things are done differently in in this you know like Skyrim has has its own things going on and and I don't know. It is very good. I I even saying that this is like 8 out of 10 feels too low for it. The problem is that like I I'm seeing it now in the modern year and like this is the first game on the what is this Gamebryo engine? I've played every other game on the Gamebryo engine and Every other 3D Bethesda game, <laughs> now that I think of it, every other real 3D in-house Bethesda game, um, which is Skyrim and Fallout 4, those are both on the creation engine, I think. Um, I've not played Fallout 76, but it uses the same engine as Fallout 4. I have played Elder Scrolls Online. I didn't like it that much. Um, I played Morrowind and Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, and this is the last like 3D Bethesda game I'm actually playing. And like, Morrowind has its brilliant story, Elegant writing, drug-filled world, uh, confusing character design, absolutely busted world you live in. <laughs> um, and, you know, Skyrim has a very, very clean aesthetic of, like, it's Vikings with some other stuff. And that's cool. You know, the whole game is, like, what if you were Beowulf? You know, you, you do quests for people. They give you big, cool swords and or property houses. Uh, you amass great loot and wealth. You know, you have a lot of places to keep your things. Um, whereas with this, it's like um, a little more classical, I feel. This this feels like a game that would get turned into a light novel or vice versa, you know? Sorry to resurrect my discussion on light novels earlier. Ugh. 
good game though. I I really did enjoy it. I had a lot of fun. I'm, I'm a little tired. Uh, you can see that it's pitch black outside. The reason I mentioned in the uh, earlier episodes, I'm wearing my sweater again, by the way. I mentioned the earlier episodes that, of course, it's winter, and I'm recording these in winter, so it gets dark really early. It is actually two in the morning now. That's a normal time for me uh, because my wife works nights, and we try to be on the same schedule so we can spend as much time together. Um, but I, I recently slept like a normal person. It was so weird. I, I like fell asleep at like 10 at night and I woke up at seven in the morning. And I was like, damn it. I slept in the wrong time. Like I slept like a textbook, perfect sleep for anyone who is not me. And, and then like I woke up and I was fuming. It was such a good sleep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm a little tired, but I, I am very, very excited by this game. I'm just, I'm in the afterglow of it now. It's, it was a really good time, really good experience. Um, like the main problems that I have with this are kind of all Bethesda problems, you know, like people talk about the awesome, I don't know, but like people talk about the awesome characters in Bethesda games and like they're kind of aren't that many. Like, it's really hard to have a really good Bethesda character, you know? Um, Because, like, w when you talk to a character, you usually have to talk to, like, 40 in one game. You know, I, I brought this up again, but, like, you compare a, a Dark Souls to an Elder Scrolls and, like, in Dark Souls, there's like 20 characters total. In a Elder Scrolls, there'll be 20 characters in one town, and there'll be like 10 to 30 towns, you know? <laughs> um, and so, like, there are, of course, standouts. Like, Morrowind has a bunch of very memorable and cool characters, like Vivek, the Viathfir, um, the Last Dwemer. What is his name, the Last Dwemer? It's not Kaganrak. Come on, he's really ugly and fat. Typical Redditor. The la last Dwemer. Yegram Bagarn, that's what his name is. Um, yeah, obviously those characters stand out, but like sometimes they more stand out for what they are or what they represent. Like you you, re you remember Divide Fear, not because of his interesting character, but because he's a weirdo who lives in a house with a bunch of clones of himself that he made out of his own cells and they're his weird daughters, possibly wives. It's confusing and gross and weird. And I don't even want to get into it, but I digress. And like, you remember him for that. And you remember Yagram, Yagram Bagarn because he's the last Dwemer and like, Oh man, he's the last Dwemer. The fact that there are no Dwemer is a massive deal. Like that has been a significant plot of everything for a while, you know? Uh, and you remember Vivek because, you know, not only is he the man god, but also he wrote the 36 lessons of Vivek. And, like, because there are 36 of those things, almost like, what, a, a, one eighth of every single book in the game is <laughs> about him or by him. Um, not And, like, there are also other books written by other people about Vivek. Um but, like, there's a lot of things to make you remember Vivek. But that, that's the thing. Because, like, I'm trying to remember characters. And, like, there was Boros, Balros, Bo... Yeah. He was, like, a red guard with a katana. And he was, like, honorable, I guess. And there was Joffrey. And he was, like, old. And he was, like, Alfred or something. Alfred from Batman, that is. Not me. Um, and then there was Sean Bean. Martin. Martin Septim. <laughs> <laughs> and there was Patrick Stewart. I don't even remember his name. I know he was Emperor Septim the 20, 21st? Severus Septim? Sec, sep, sep, Septimus Septim? Something like that. I, I seem to remember that he had like a sevens thing going on. And he was like, his name was like Septimus Septim the Septimius, which is like three ways of writing seven in Latin. Sept. And then, like, he was the 21st 
which is three sevens, of course. Anyway, those are all the characters I remember. I remember talking to an Argonian or a Kaijit about some books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's kind of it. Those are all the characters I remember. And, like, that is a problem of all Bethesda games. Like, it is really hard to make a cast this big when the story is focused on just you. It's really hard to make that whole cast something worth a damn, you know? Um, and it's... Sorry, I have a little ponytail. I uh, I just got distracted by my own hair like some sort of animal. Don't mind me. Um, it's just one of those things, you know? It's kind of hard to nail those characters down. And when you don't have really, really strong character-defining moments and things for characters to do, you just show up and, and talk to them. They may as well be like a computer terminal that you're getting a request from, you know? That's why when uh, Fallout 76 said, we're not going to have any NPCs, it's just going to be computer terminals you talk to, I was kind of like, not that different. <laughs> One thing is that Fallout 4 actually has some really good NPCs. But that's Fallout. And Fallout, again, already has a much smaller cast than the average Elder Scrolls. I'm drifting now. Um, I really enjoyed this game. I do want to come back and play the DLC. I'm aware that there are two, Knights of the Nine and Shivering Isles. Shiv, yeah, Shivering Isles. Um, I don't think I'll be playing Knights of the Nine because Knights of the Nine is is not really a DLC in the traditional sense. It is downloadable content, but like it's not like an expansion. It just puts some more quests in the game. Whereas the Shivering Isles adds a little landmass for you. You know, when I when I put an expansion in, I expect something like that. When you put in Dawn Guard for for Skyrim, a valley that was inaccessible or not there before is now accessible and or there. There's a whole valley that you can explore now and a bunch of other caves and stuff. Um, and there's a new island off the coast where it's like, oh, yeah, we can go here and see the vampires. And that's cool. So long as you have that premium content, son. You know, when you buy uh, um, Dragonborn DLC or you buy the Blood Moon DLC, you know, a whole subcontinent, a little island next to Morrowind or Skyrim shows up and it's like, Oh hey, we can now we can now go to this little rock and explore it, and that's cool. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yeah, the other DLC, the Tribunal DLC for Morrowind. Like, oh yeah, we can now go to the mainland and explore this whole city, and it's the largest city like in the game now. Granted, the DLC is just that city, but yeah, you know. Um. So yeah. <laughs> uh shivering isles is a real expansion from what i've been told knights of the nine just put some quests and like a i think one building in and i here's here's the main thing right i have heard people talk about shivering isles to great extent to great glory and humor they love shivering isles some people have told me they boot my friend caitlin actually says that she's never ever beaten the main quest of oblivion she's never bothered she doesn't care but she has gone back to replay and restart Oblivion just so she can go play Shivering Isles again. And to her, that's Oblivion. <laughs> that's the game. The main quest of Oblivion is not Oblivion. The DLC is. And, and that appears to be an opinion that a lot of people share. Where, like, they say, fuck the main quest, we don't care. Let's just go play Shivering Isles. And, like, I might legitimately come out and, and agree with them, but I haven't played it. And the thing is, is that, like, for a lot of people... The Soul Slime DLCs, you know, Blood Moon or or Dragonborn are like that. I, I actually am kind of like that in Skyrim because, like, I love Morrowind. And so, you know, oh, my God, I get to go be in Little Morrowind, you know, in Morrowind Town, like a Chinatown. That's the bit I'm going for. Yeah, I get to be in Morrowind Town in Skyrim, and that's awesome. I love that. That's dope. Um, and it's an HD, and hell, yeah. Uh... Sorry, my cats are doing something silly. Um, and so I, I don't see people talking about like the other things as much. You know, same to you with Dawnguard. Like Dawnguard and and 
tribunal get talked about a bit because it's like, yeah, there's vampires, there's Serana, she's cool. And you get to see the other two parts of the tribunal. Like, it's the most DLC thing ever. These two big important gods that are two parts of the three and you only meet one of the three ever. <laughs> you know, obviously that is the most, holy shit, that's DLC ever. So they get talked about a little bit. Um, but most people are here for Soulstime. They love Soulstime DLC. But like, while people will gush about Shivering Isles, I never see people talk about Knights of the Nine. And to me, that says that it must not be very good. Because if it was good, they would talk about it, right? Like, I see people not talking about Knights of the Nine ever. And I'm like, what would be the point then, you know? Like, if, if everyone played it and then had nothing to say about it, then if I go to play it on my channel, how could I have anything to say about it? I I might just run dry. I might run aground, and that would be unfortunate. I would want I would want to avoid that, um, because I like to play interesting games on my channel. No offense. I mean, God, I've quit LPs. <laughs> my like Far Cry Primal LP or my uh, Dragon's Dogma LP. Those games just kind of I ran out of stuff to talk about, and they're not super super interesting. Um, they're also kind of hard to talk over because they don't give me a lot of stuff. But then on the flip side, you know, there's only so much that I can say about a certain topic, like New Vegas. I, I started to play through New Vegas, but like, God, I I don't really have that much to say about New Vegas. New Vegas is easily the most talked about Fallout game, so. Anyway. Um, for those of you who never watch an LP of mine, I typically do this. I play the game. Whether or not the last episode runs long, um, or run short rather, I will sit and talk and, and just air out my thoughts completely. And sometimes I will air out my thoughts for longer than I even played the game in that episode. And sometimes that's a, my fault thing of like, Hey, I, you know, <laughs> I, I said, all right, cut with five episodes, uh, five minutes left in the game. And then the next episode is five minutes of gameplay and 30 minutes of talking just to, pat out my runtime but it's not really me patting on my runtime i do have these thoughts i want to share um but i'm wrapping them up so if you've never seen an lp of mine and this is your first one i hope you enjoyed it if this is my first video man go back and watch the other episodes of this lp there's a whole 34 other episodes for you to enjoy and most of them are pretty good if you don't know who i am i'm alfred that's short for l friedrich and that's spelled with an ash i got it tattooed on the back of my hand so people know what it is um, if you would like to see other LPs of mine I've played through Morrowind I've actually done multiple LPs of Morrowind but the one that I did in May of 2021 was the really good one um, I played Kingdom of Loathing and I intend to play West of Loathing soon because um, the third Loathing game just came out or it could be fourth uh, yeah the third Loathing game just came out and so it's it's probably a good time for me to go and play West of Loathing um I played through every Halo game. My LP of Reach and ODST were particularly salient and powerful. Um, and I had a lot of things to say in Halo 4. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, my Salt and Sanctuary LP was pretty good. Uh, there were a few episodes that had... There was one episode that had bad audio, but that's skippable. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh yeah, I LP'd Blasphemous and people loved it, which was kind of unfortunate because that's like, I don't talk in that LP. <laughs> I talk in the first episode and the last episode and then like it got awesome views and I was like, oh, did they not like my voice? I played Marathon, the I think first game by Bungie who are now known as the Destiny guys, but before that they were the Halo guys, but before that they were the Marathon guys. Um, That was well liked. The Marathon community is so awesome <laughs> i love the marathon community i like don't even consider myself a like marathon fan but like nobody would take offense if i said that you know the the marathon fans have all been pretty nice um but yeah those are all pretty good lps of mine if you want to go and watch something uh but until next time i am gonna come play the dlc i'm gonna replay morrowind i i've been thinking about it too much for me to not do it <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I've been Alfred. I hope you had a good time. I know that I did. I had a really, really fun time playing this game. Um, but I'll see you guys next time. Bye.